Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So, is it possible to determine calorific value of a given fuel in a simple and open vessel? Or why don't you require a special operator like bomb calorimeter to determine the calorific value? These things is going to discuss in this topic. This is the third video in fuels. You can watch all my previous videos regarding fuels, electrochemistry, corrosion and water technology and many more topics in my channel. So the corresponding links are given in following description. Please follow it. So what is calorific value? So by definition calorific value is the total quantity of heat liberated when unit mass of fuel is completely burned. So when you take a unit mass of fuel, if you burn it in presence of oxygen completely, then it produces heat amount. So the total heat liberated by the fuel is called calorific value. So can we measure CV in a open vessel? So no, why? Because for example, if you take a, a, a fuel, it is, an, it is a globe, but just consider it is as a fuel. It is a fuel. So when this fuel is burned in presence of open vessel, so it releases heat energy. If you keep thermometer or heating measurement here, so it will give you some value, but it is unable to determine the total heat liberated by fuel. Why? Because so, so much heat is transferred to atmosphere. If so much loss of heat is there, you are unable to determine this transferred heat into atmosphere. That's why you definitely require a special operator that, that prevent the passage of transfer of this heat into atmosphere. That special in instrument is called bomb calorimeter. So bomb calorimeter is a device which is used to determine the calorific value of a solid or liquid fuel. Remember it by using calorimeter, bomb calorimeter, you are only able to determine the calorific value of a solid or liquid fuel. Okay, so what principle involved in this bomb calorimeter? Very simple here, a known weight of fuel is completely burned in bomb calorimeter and it rises the temperature of known weight of water and it is measured. By this process, we can determine the calorific value of a fuel. There is an instrument is there. I will explain the construction of instrument in this. So known weight of fuel, how much fuel is taking, we already known that known weight of fuel is completely burned. Why? Because of this burning process, it produces the heat energy, that heat energy transferred to known weight of water. How much water is there also, we known. This water temperature will rise, that rising temperature is measured with the dharma kapha, dharma meter. Okay, so by measuring these things, we can determine the, this, this fuel's calorific value. So very simple, this is the principle involved in the bomb calorimeter. So what is the construction of bomb calorimeter? There is a four parts in bomb calorimeter. First one is bomb cell and second one is calorimeter and third and fourth one is air jacket and water jackets. These are very simple. We need to discuss about bomb cell and calorimeter. So by looking this figure is going to be a complex one but it's a very simple one. I will make it a parts and I will explain it. So first part is bomb cell. Bomb cell consisting of a stainless steel vessel. This is the stainless steel vessel. Stainless steel is a good conductor of heat. So it is not an insulator. It, it, it can conduct the heat energy. There is a stainless steel uh, conducting material act as a bomb cell. In the bomb cell, there is a crucible. This is the crucible. So in this crucible, known weight of fuel is taking. This is the known weight of fuel. So how much the weight of fuel we already known. This is the known weight of fuel. This known weight of fuel is connected with the magnesium fused wires. This is the magnesium fused wires. This fuel is connected to magnesium fused wire. These fused wires are connected to electrodes. Electrodes are connected to battery. Okay. So N. This bomb cell also provided with the oxygen vent or oxygen valve to fill the oxygen gas. This is the construction of bomb cell. See here. So first thing is bomb cell is made by stainless steel and it is not a insulator. Next one is there is a crucible in that known weight of fuel is the, this is the known weight of fuel sample. Next one is magnesium fused wire. What is the required of magnesium fused wire? So 
a ignition temperature is required to start combustion process of a fuel okay any fuel if you take it requires some initial energy to start combustion process to provide that initial temperature we are using this magnesium fused wire to burn this magnesium wire we require electricity so battery and electrodes provide that energy to the magnesium fused wire then magnesium fused wire burn because of the heat energy the fuel also involved in burn but combustion will only happen in presence of oxygen that's why there is a oxygen wall it provides the sufficient oxygen to involve a fuel in combustion process so this is a totally bomb cell okay so next this bomb cell should be immersed in a calorimeter operator so this is called calorimeter operator in this calorimeter we just immersed the bomb cell okay this is the bomb cell and along with bomb cell this calorimeter also contain known weight of water this is the known weight of water and one side beckman thermometer and another side electrical or mechanical operated stirrer okay very simple and this insulator calorimeter is a insulator material it will not transfer heat from inside to outside outside to inside it is a perfect insulator material remember it bomb cell is not a insulator material it can uh, transfer the heat from inside to outside or outside to inside okay but calorimeter is a insulator vessel it doesn't transfer the heat from inside to outside okay so here simply calorimeter contains a bomb cell a known weight of water and a buckman thermometer to measure the temperature variations an electrical operator to keep the temperature throughout the calorimeter homogeneously okay this is the calorimeter this calorimeter is surrounded by the air jacket this is the air jacket and water jacket so these are the simple so this is the total construction of the bomb cell so by looking at a one it's it's little bit complicated but when you draw or when you study by parts it become very easy just follow that one so this is the already I, I explained the total construction of the bomb cell here only thing is the weight of fuel we just know we known and weight of water also we known okay so you just need to burn this fuel and it produces the heat that heat will be transferred to water why because this is the conducting metal bomb cell is a conducting metal that's why heat will be passed to water water temperature will rise that rise in temperature is measured by the beckman thermometer that was simple process by that we can determine the calorific value of given fuel so working of bomb calorimeter first thing is you need to fill oxygen gas into the bomb cell so there you need to fill oxygen gas up to 25 atmosphere pressure you need to add oxygen gas into bomb cell then you can close the vessel so after that just on the battery then because of battery on the magnesium fuse vessel will burn it produces the initial temperature to start combustion by that initial temperature fuel involved in combustion uh, it produces the heat energy that heat energy transfer to known weight of water that water temperature will rise and there is a beckman thermometer is there when you start the sorry when there is electrical stirrer is there it will keep temperature homogeneously throughout the solution so it will uh, stir uh, stir completely from beginning to end process so it will keep water temperature homogeneously throughout the operator okay so we can measure the how much temperature raised of water because of combustion that is called t2 t2 is temperature of water after combustion process and also we are able to know the temperature of water before combustion that is called t1 so we need to measure the t1 and t2 so if you did the t2 minus t1 it will give the how much temperature raised because of combustion process that one only we have to do how much temperature increased so now calculation of calorific value so in the bomb calorimeter the heat generated by the x gram of fuel that is equal x into l the heat generated during the combustion process x into l is equal to heat absorbed by the water and its instrument okay actually here 
uh, weight mass of the substance and produce it the product we are taking here xl into is xl is equal capital w plus small w into t2 minus t1 so x mean weight of the fuel so we already known calorific value means the total heat liberated by the unit mass of fuel not x grams of fuel one if, if xl is equal to the heat produced by the total substance what is the calorific value is when if you, only l is the calorific value of the fuel that's why you need to send x value this side so l is equal calorific value is equal so that is hcv why we have to call hcv here this is a closed vessel bomb calorimeter is a closed vessel you are not allowing the water vapors escaping into outside i already explained what is hcv and what is ncv in my previous video you can watch it hcv means higher calorific value so the total heat liberated by the fuel and combustion and combustion products are condensed at room temperature not allowing into atmosphere so bomb calorimeter is not allowing the escaping into atmosphere that's why this value is become higher calorific value that is equal to t2 minus t1 into capital w plus small w by x here x is equal weight of the fuel and w capital w is equal mass of the water in the calorimeter how much water we are keep in the calorimeter that is a capital w and small w is equal water equivalents grams of calorimeter stirrer thermometer why because they also absorb some of the heat not only water these instrument also in, uh, also absorb the heat energy that's why we need to consider the water water equivalent weights of calorimeter stirrer thermometer that is taken as a small w and t1 is initial temperature of the water before combustion t2 is equal final temperature of the water after combustion so l is equal hcv is equal calorific value that to high calorific value and units are calorie per gram or kilo calorie per kg so this is the heat heat capacity per gram that's why calorie per gram this is the units so like that we can measure but there is a correction see that was a simple formula but uh, this formula also can made with the corrections so what is the corrections here okay so again i will mention the what is calorific value the total quantity of heat liberated when unit mass of the fuel is completely burned that means this total quantity of heat is related to the fuel the fuel only has to produce that heat only called calorific value right so if you observe here when you burn the fuel you required a magnesium fused wires so when you start the battery so magnesium fused wires first on they produces little bit amount of heat because of that heat fuel burn so because of this magnesium fused wire burns it produces also some of the heat so this heat also will count here but we need to determine only fuel's calorific value this heat is produced by the magnesium fused wire that's why this heat should be removed from the total value this is called magnesium fused wire correction we should remove we should remove if you observe in the formula minus magnesium fused wire correction so from total value we should remove the magnesium fused wire value magnesium fused wire produced heat energy we should remove so that is a one of the correction next one is acid correction if i already told uh, some of the nitrogen sulfur may be present in the fuel as a contaminants these those are the not constituents of the fuel but sometimes fuel may be contain sulfur and nitrogen when they are present in the fuel involved in combustion they produces acid like sulfuric acid nitric acid like this acids they have produces heat energy but those are not a part of coal those are impurities so we should not consider their heat part in our fuel weight fuel heat so that's why we should remove the heat energy generated by the acids that's why we should remove the acid energy that is called acid correction so acid energy also removed from the fuel so that is the acid correction next one is cooling correction even though this is a thermo 
thermo uh, thermo couple that mean this, even though it is a insulator vessel there is a loss of heat is there why because when you keep hot milk in the flask overnight uh, early morning if you observe even though it is a thermo flask some of the heat is loosed so that is a cooling correction like that there is also some of the heat loses by the natural phenomena that heat we are losing actually that is produced by the fuel but we are unable to calculate that heat that heat should be add that's why plus cooling correction so this is the plus cooling correction so when you add all these corrections into formula that formula will become as hcv is equal capital w plus small w into t2 minus t1 plus cooling correction and bracket here and minus magnesium fused wire correction minus acid correction by by totally by x value this will give the hcv value or calorific value of a given fuel with the corrections okay so just uh, have a look how to calculate the hcv and lc by taking a numerical problem here problem is they gave the data so the mass of fuel is equal 0.75 grams that means x value they given x value is equal 0.75 grams and mass of the water taken in bomb calorimeter is equal 1150 grams so small w also they gi they given this water so this is the water capital w is equal 1150 grams and water equivalent mass of bomb calorimeter is equal 350 grams that is equal small w value 350 grams and the temperature of water increased from 27 degrees centigrade to 30.02 degrees centigrade that means 27 is equal t1 and 30.02 is equal t2 so we have all parameters what we required it's cv is equal t2 minus t1 capital w plus capital w small w by x we have all per parameters we can easily calculate the hcv value we will get hcv value what we get that is hcv value that is why because bomb calorimeter is a closed vessel here we are not allowing the combustible gases escape into atmosphere that's why the coming value is a hcv value so once if you know the hcv value how can you determine the ncv value we have a formula lcv is equal hcv minus 0 0.09 into hydrogen percent to 587 you already hcv you know the hcv value by these calculations so if you observe the form, given formula they give the 2.8 percentage of hydrogen the fuel contain 2.8 percentage of hydrogen that means h value also given you can easily calculate this value also like that you can determine the hcv and lcv from the bomb calorimeter data okay so have a look another type of formula with corrections here if you observe the formula they give the mass of the fuel 0 0.92 grams and mass of the water 550 grams and small w water equivalence 2200 grams and temperature rise they directly give the rise in temperature 2.42 degree that means they didn't give the t1 t2 separately they directly give t2 minus t1 as a 2.42 degree centigrade and cooling correction they give also corrections also two seconds fire fused wire correction 12 calories and acid correction 48 calories you just submit the uh, capital w plus small w into t2 minus plus cooling correction two seconds minus magnesium fused wire correction 12 calories minus 48 that was acid correction by x 0 0.92 grams you will get hcv value when you get hcv value it is very easy to determine the lcv value why because they give the hydrogen percentage six per hydrogen as a six percentage in the fuel so this is the bomb calorimeter principal construction working and calculation of the hcv and ncv values of given fuel so uh, remember it is only suitable for solids and liquids only it is not subjected to determine the gaseous calorific value so thank you very much being with me